So I had to come get a jacket from Walmart because it's up the street for the Trump rally. I just want to show you guys. There's automatic checkout here. There's four cashiers, one, two, three, four, you see. And then all the rest of this super Walmart, whatever they call it, <laughs> is self-checkout now. So this is the transition happening right in front of your face. This is where you do money stuff. That's closed. It's a Saturday afternoon. It should be open. And, uh, and, and uh, none of the self-checkouts take cash anymore here at this Walmart in South Carolina. So only the cashiers take cash, and they're down to four. That'll, so that'll soon be down to one and then zero. Hey everyone, I stopped at a gas station in Alabama to get some fuel. And y'all talk about minimum wage, how high it's getting and stuff. This gas station is what's going to happen. Everything here is automated. There's not a soul here working. And I'm going to show you around to show you what I've seen. I've never seen this before. But I'm here with my truck. Just got out. It's just a regular gas pump you pay at the pump. So let me take you inside. Like I say, there's no attendance. There's nobody here. As you go in, there's nothing. There's nobody. There's not a window. There's nothing. See, it says pay at the pump only. No cash accepted. There's your coffee, ice. I'm making a video of this. I ain't never seen nothing like this. You talk about minimum wage going up? This is what's going to happen. There's nobody here to pay. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is going to All of these machines are automated. And all you do is come over here and you touch the screen. You pick what you want. Like if I wanted a drink. Drink. Let's take uh, sodas. Soda. There's all the sodas. You put your money in the machine. And the sodas are down here, they drop down. Now let me show you the bathroom. There's the ladies, there's the men's. Restrooms, purchase required, code on the bottom of receipt. You have to purchase gas outside to get a code. You punch it in right here. For the women's, that's for the men's. And there's not a soul here. So they don't have to pay minimum wage. And all they have over here is they have a microwave, stuff for your coffee, ice, everything. Gas pumps on this side. Gas pumps on the other side. No one to pay. Digital transformation is changing the way we manage our data, our information, our interactions, and our identities online. The United Nations is ready to digitally transform how it deals with identity with a system to streamline information sharing, daily workflows, access to platforms and buildings, operating across agencies by providing its personnel with a universal system-wide identity solution. Introducing the UN Digital ID, a unique and digital identity for UN personnel from the day you join to the day you part. All of your personal, HR, medical, travel, security, payroll and pension data in the palm of your hand, giving you full control on what you share and with whom. With blockchain and biometrics, the UN Digital ID makes verification efficient, secure, transparent, immutable, portable and universal. It's been piloted by different agencies and the UN Pension Fund, where they've replaced current manual processes with certainty for who and where pension recipients say they are at any given time. Imagine a regional field office has just joined the UN. She uses the mobile app to obtain a digital wallet, stored securely in her smartphone and only accessible to her with biometrics. Even better than a physical wallet, she can store all her credentials issued by any UN organization in her digital wallet. She has immediate access to course certificates, travel clearances from UNDSS, medical records from allergies to vaccinations, also making any transfer to another organization a breeze. As innovation transforms the world, we can improve the way we manage our identities online. UN Digital IDs, a building block for digital cooperation, unlocking the promise of the SDGs. Um, okay, let's talk ID. I, I am not at all comfortable having a bunch of ID, like credit cards and bank cards, on my phone to scan. I, I'm Same. assuming you are cut from a similar cloth. Same. We are paranoid. Yeah. 
Uh, we feel if someone steals their phone, they already have enough information and photos and everything else as it is. Why give them our entire life and well, run amok with our credit cards? If, if you're comfortable with it and you live in Ontario, you're going to have some choices here because Ontario's digital IDs will be launching later this year. The new government-issued IDs will live entirely on your device. So the good news is if you hate going to service Ontario, which is always a pleasant experience in normal times, you don't have to go because you can just renew that way. But then again, everything's on your phone, so if you're paranoid like Dean and I, yeah. it's an issue. But just to lay it out, you can use your digital ID to check in for virtual medical appointments, apply for government assistance like CERB, EI, access vaccination records, which a lot of people might be doing over the next 12 months, you can also open a bank account. You can uh, use it to obtain birth, marriage, and death certificates, says the government. So there's, you know, listen, if you can't get to a service Ontario, if you can't stand in that lovely line and, and wait for all your stuff, there's some real benefits to this. No way am I having that much personal information on my phone. It's I'm terrifying. not doing it. Canada is on the cusp of a revolutionary innovation that will transform the way Canadians authenticate themselves online and protect their identity. Digital ID. All of us are living in a digital world, but we're tethered to an analog model of how we identify ourselves. Memorizing countless online passwords, carrying government-issued licenses, plastic cards, and more. Digital ID is a way for Canadians to identify themselves to government, businesses, and each other electronically with ease and rock-solid security without the need to present physical documents. One interconnected network. A federated digital ID ecosystem developed in collaboration with Canada's best and brightest talent from our banks, telecommunication companies, law enforcement, and government. It would have the power and security to store every Canadian's electronic identity and attributes. And it would unlock countless opportunities for Canadians to verify who they are safely, quickly, and securely while only revealing the information necessary for each transaction. A fast, easy, and secure way to bank, sign up for government services, renew driver's licenses or health cards, shop, travel, and more. Canada's banks are perfectly situated to help lead the creation of a federated digital ID system between government and the private sector. The World Economic Forum agrees that banks and financial institutions should lead the path forward for digital ID. Banks are highly regulated and trusted they have advanced cybersecurity and privacy technology, and they have the infrastructure to operate provincially and nationally. Banks are also at the forefront of working with fintech startups who are bringing revolutionary mobile and online products and services to Canadians. Digital ID can help consumers navigate between these apps and programs with trust and confidence, knowing their ID is protected at all times. A federated digital ID approach can also significantly reduce fraud, save taxpayer money, improve regulatory compliance, and make it easier to do business as an owner and as a consumer. In fact, the Canadian Bankers Association just launched a white paper with our recommendations on how to move forward with a federated digital ID framework. I encourage you to read it to learn more. Mr. Deputy Minister, they, would uh, a central bank digital currency be in the offing? Uh, you have... It seems uh, it seems like you have everything in place to set it up, uh, or at least some of the infrastructure with a digital passport. Uh, do you think that that's something a, a, a digital version uh, of the currency makes sense uh, to implement soon? Yeah, yeah, uh, that's a great question, though. Uh, in last summer, I think in August, uh, we passed their law that uh, our national bank can actually start uh, doing CBDC. And, but, but there was a um, delayed, um, the law was delayed in, uh, um, like, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm, 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 I'm trying to say that law passed, but uh, uh, there, there was a provision that say that in a, uh, it's going to be in effect in a year. So, this year in August, it's going to be like in effect. So in the meantime, uh, our national bank together with us working on a pilot projects on CBDC. Uh, so uh, we considering different platforms. Um, we recently announced that one of their pilots will be on the Stellar Foundation, on the Stellar blockchain. Uh, so we work with the Stellar Foundation and their uh, commercial banks in Ukraine. They're trying to come up with their, with their working concept. Um, there's also um, pilots with Ethereum and, 
and we're preparing a near with with a near protocol. So um, I think in a couple of months from now, uh, we'll announce some results on those pilots, and uh, we're trying to since uh, the law will be in effect in in August. So we're trying to do everything that we is possible to um, uh, figure out what their their outcomes, what their technical advantages or or obstacles in order to launch it um, early next year, or maybe in the end of this year. I think, 